we will talk now about a very cheap uh, drug, uh, tranexamic acid, uh, with uh, Dr. Paul Zufray. So what's your opinion on uh, tranexamic acid, uh, TXA? Um, do you think that it's uh, efficient, uh, cheap? Uh, we know, well, in France it's cheap, I don't know in other countries. But is it efficient? Do we use it uh, enough in, in bleeding and uh, surgery? Uh, probably, uh, definitely, we don't use it enough. And uh, I want to try and convince you that this drug is uh, not only cheap, but it's smart. So uh, tranexamic acid is, uh, is used to prevent or to treat a major bleeding. And uh, it acts by preventing plasmin from binding to uh, fibrin. And therefore, it prevents plasmin to degrade fibrin. So you really have to see tranexamic acid as a drug that is going to strengthen the fibrin clot and it's not going to increase clot formation. So it should normally reduce bleeding and transfusion, and it should not increase uh, vascular occlusive events, such as myocardial infarction or uh, deep venous thrombosis. Now, tranexamic acid uh, can be used to prevent or to treat bleeding, as I said. It has been studied in thousands of patients it is, without any doubt, the most studied drug, most studied intervention, I should say, uh, for patient uh, blood management. Now, in surgery, results indicate uh, reduce uh, bleeding with this drug, also reduce uh, rate of transfusion. Um, and this reduction is observed in a wide range of uh, clinical uh, situations, clinical uh, surgical procedures. Uh, it also reduces mortality in surgery, although the quality of evidence is much lower than uh, that observed with transfusion. In trauma patients, it uh, reduces mortality. And in obstetrics, um, it prevents uh, bleeding uh, after uh, uh, caesarean and section or uh, vaginal birth. Also, in women that suffer a postpartum hemorrhage, it uh, reduces mortality due to bleeding. So it is a highly effective treatment. But to be smart, it also has to be a highly safe treatment. Well, as I told you before, the drug does not uh, promote clot formation. And uh, the results of hundreds of randomized control trials uh, show clearly that there is no increase in vascular occlusive events no increase in venous thrombosis, no increase in myocardial infarction, no increase in stroke. There is also no increase in renal failure. However, there is one, we'll say, major adverse event that has only been observed in cardiac surgery is the higher uh, risk of postoperative seizure. And as uh, we can see on the, uh, on the figure there, that the uh, risk increases with uh, increasing dose, that this increase is uh, really uh, Im well important above 50 milligrams per kilogram, so that is around 3 grams. However, the absolute increase remains low. There is also a minor side effect, which is an increase in nausea in, uh, if the patient is awake. So the drug is highly safe. Now, how should we give this drug? Well, the uh, most important message is as soon as possible. So that means uh, in surgery we have to initiate the treatment before starting surgery and in trauma and in postpartum hemorrhage immediately. You can see on, this, uh, uh, on the figure um, that with um, increasing delay uh, from trauma, there is a decrease in, oops, a decrease in efficacy and after three hours of trauma, if you initiate the treatment with tranexamic acid, there is an increase in the risk of mortality. So do not administer tranexamic acid more than three hours after uh, trauma. So how much should we give? The dose is one gram. Uh, there is no evidence uh, for higher doses. And how long should we give it? Well, in most cases, one single preoperative dose is enough. In total knee arthroplasty, a second bolus, uh, three hours after the first dose or uh, at the end of surgery uh, should be given. And I would like to emphasize that the most important uh, when we uh, administer to this uh, drug is to 
follow the regimens that have been studied in randomized controlled trials. And I like to remember uh, uh, that in trauma, uh, in the CRASH-2 trial, the dose was one gram and another gram uh, given over eight hours. And in the woman trial, uh, in postpartum hemorrhage, the dose was one gram and a second gram uh, was given 30 minutes later if the bleeding persisted. So, um, yes, it is a smart drug. It reduces mortality. And the really the important message is to give the minimal effective dose, which is one gram, and give it as soon as possible. But it's also cheap. Uh, you mentioned that in France the direct cost is uh, really low. But in England, they have performed a, an economic evaluation of this drug and have shown that for patient blood management, it is the most cost-effective option. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. So uh, it's uh, quite convincing. Um, I, I have several questions. Um, regarding surgery, how do you choose a surgery that will, uh, that will uh, need the administration of uh, tranexamic acid? Uh, you talked about cardiac surgery. Uh, you talked about obstetrics, trauma. Now, um, for example, I have um, um, cancer surgery. Um, in which patient will I choose to use TXA because of a potential bleeding? Uh, well, the, uh, the English have uh, given a very easy uh, answer to this. And they say that they recommend, they don't say you, sh you ought to or consider, they say you should use tranexamic acid if uh, uh, the uh, bleeding is, is going to be above 500 milliliters. So that is a lot of surgical yeah. procedures. Okay, how do you predict that? I, 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 I am not able to predict any bleeding with any surgeon, so no. help me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, this is going to be uh, uh, cancer surgery is a very good example. Okay. I mean, uh, but also even but in procedures where the bleeding is less, uh, for example, f uh, thyroid surgery. Yes, because of the, uh, because the of impact, the, the potential impact. Okay. Yes. Uh, but considering the volume of bleeding. Uh, 500 uh, uh, milliliter is very low. Yeah. I would not transfuse any patient with only a loss of 500 milliliters. No, definitely. So that means that uh, um, I it's all a question on patient blood management. Mm. Is, it, is patient ma blood management uh, only for reducing the risk of transfusion or is it also to reduce the consequences of bleeding, such as anemia? And that's, I'm um, sorry, uh, okay, I don't have okay. the answer. Uh, you don't have any, uh, any threshold, for example, hemoglobin level pre-op. Uh, mm. uh, uh, for example, one patient, my patient has a 15 gram per liter of uh, uh, hemoglobin. He will bleed any f w even one liter. He will not uh, decrease the hemoglobin level very low. No, I understand. So I will not have the impact of anemia. Now, that's a very good question, and I think that thank could you, be thank a, you. a good paper, that. <laughs> huh? Okay. Y you said one gram, uh, one gram fits for everyone? No, no. Well, in most patients. Okay. Of course, in pediatrics, you're not going to give uh, one gram to your patients, and you're going to adapt it to the body weight of the patient. That is going to be something like 15 milligrams per kilogram. And in a very obese patient, you're going to probably increase those, but not much. You will increase the dose based on ideal body weight and not on uh, total body weight. Uh, okay. Um, now, uh, let's go back to a clinical situation. My patients are uh, elderly. They usually have cardiovascular risk factors. Okay? He has uh, had uh, an infarct two years, ag two, uh, two, uh, two years ago. Do you consider that this patient is a contraindication to the use of TXA? Oh, God, that's another very good question. No, no, I no, know no, that. No, no, I know. So it has been for a very long time a uh, very important contraindication. Um, uh, the the uh, history of venous thrombosis or history of arterial thrombosis, uh, like myocardial infarction. Um, however, uh, as I told you before, there has been thousands of patients that have been uh, evaluated in randomized controlled trials and no, there is absolutely no indication for an increased risk of uh, occlusive events. So uh, you can give this drug to patients with a history of occlusive events. 
I don't answer okay. your question. We have several questions from the chat. Uh, Dr. Khalil Jabour uh, asks for uh, doses of tranexamic acid in pediatrics. You already uh, give, can you uh, give us again the dose for uh, in pediatrics? Uh, I, I would base it on a on a well adjusted body weight to 15 maximum 20 milligrams no, per okay. kilogram. The same colleague asks if you regret the uh, protein. Oh no, not at all. Okay. Not at all. And uh, Dr. Fleifel, uh, is TXA uh, efficient independently of fibrinogen level? I don't understand this. This is a tricky one. Oh, uh, you may have an answer for this one. No, it's, it's, it is a tricky one. Uh, there was, oh, and I can't remember the first author. It was a Spanish team. And they uh, looked at the efficacy of uh, tranexamic acid depending on the phenotype of uh, uh, fibrinogen and showed that ah. in certain patients it worked better than others. Uh, so, perhaps, depending on the level of fibrinogen, there may be uh, d uh, differences in terms of efficacy, but I absolutely don't have any uh, data on that. Uh, I have a question um, uh, regarding the, 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 ta the target of three hours after a trauma. So, you said that, we, that uh, um, later than three hours, uh, it may be dangerous to... Um, to uh to infuse uh, TXA. Okay, let's see uh, a, a situation where the patient has a massive, tr a tr a severe trauma uh, with bleeding. Uh, he arrives at the, he is admitted at the hospital the more than three hours. Then uh, he didn't have the uh, uh, TXA before in pre-hospital, uh, uh, and he needs to go to surgery, a hemostatic surgery. I mean, do you use TXA in this surgery? Uh, first, I'll be very angry with the guys in the ambulance, okay. why didn't you give the drug? And no, I, would, I will not give the drug. It has to be given before three hours. Uh, even if the surgery is a complex orthopedic surgery, I mean uh, pelvic ring uh, stabilization or things no, like no, that? No, no, I would not. No. Okay, I think we, have, uh, we are done with all these uh, questions. Thank you very much, uh, Paul.